Uh, giving good gifts. Your parents, or you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask you for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not, right? So when I was young, Thaddeus, and I don't know where, where you were, I used to, there was a, I remember very distinctly, I don't know why this is, you, you have like these weird childhood memories of you're like, why do I still remember that? That was like... Yeah, like things that are totally random and totally unimportant to remember and like important events. I'm like, I know something important happened, but I can't remember precisely when or what. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then you have a memory like I'm about to share with you at a Thornton's gas station <laughs> back in the 90s. They, they had just opened and they were doing a four wheeler giveaway, right? ATV. And I wanted that ATV, right? So I did my good Christian thing. I asked. I seeked, I knocked, I did it repetitively. I wanted my ATV. I wanted that four wheeler. I wanted to win. And I knew that I would, I would win that <laughs> ATV, right? Because God promised me that if I asked him for the four wheeler, that I would get the four wheeler. Does this sound like uh, some preachers do some prosperity preachers to you? <laughs> you know, I was going to wait till your story was finished, but then I was going to say something along the line. So I take it you're not a prosperity gospel person. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, because when you don't get what you're asking for, you're going to go, well, it's all baloney, and then you apostatize, right? It's a it's a silly position. It's a silly position uh, to have, right? So, of course, we all want, like, these silly things, right? Um, but there are also more emotional things that we can all want as well. And it seems like these past two sections that I've just read are giving us, like, this promise. If you ask... Uh, God's good. He's going to give you the good gift that you asked for, right? If you just read it very surface level, if you've never read the book of Job, you think that uh, God's here to serve you and serve you alone. And that's that, right? But that's not really how it goes, right? Because I'm going to be a little bit serious here. I'm going to be real, right? Uh, I know lots of people who have prayed for health of themselves or for their loved ones. They have prayed for fertility and having children, um, they have prayed for like a healthier relationship, whether it be with friends, family, romance. Um, they've prayed for people to be safe, to come home. And they prayed for things like food, water, shelter, all that. And unfortunately, Thaddeus, a lot of times they don't, they don't get that, right? They don't get what they're asking for. And this can be a major crisis of faith for a lot of people, right? But you said if I ask you, I'll get it, and that's what I deserve, right? You're going to say something? Oh, I, I was just going to say that, yeah, I mean, it's easy to see when we make a selfish prayer. You mm -hmm. know, I, I want to get rich, or I, yeah. I want a new car, or whatever. I want a promotion. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to see why that wouldn't be answered, but it right. is harder to see why, uh, you know, I'm just praying that my, my sick child get well. You know, yeah. and, and and that doesn't happen either necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it, it does. I do believe in modern miracles, but right. uh, a lot of times it doesn't happen. And then that's the question is always why. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. My brain's going weird today. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> have you ever seen the movie The Fight Club? Yes. All right. Um, there's a there's a line in there. This was my favorite movie growing up. By the way, it's probably why I messed up. Uh, but there's a line in there when he said, if you extend the timeline out long enough, the survival rate of everyone drops to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, although it's a weird movie, that, that line, I think, uh, can apply to a lot of different situations, right? So basically what, what that line means and what I think Christ is saying here is, is if you extend the timeline out long enough, it's all tragedy, right? It's all all tragedy, at least temporally here on earth um but what what we don't see what we don't know right that we have faith in is the goodness of the goodness of god and the sovereignty of god and the fact that uh, he knows better than we know right so a couple of things that i do know about god is god is good and god is love and um god is just god is gracious god is merciful I know that he works all things together for his purposes, right? And if his purposes are as he promised, which are for goodness, for love, for mercy, all of those beautiful things, then no matter what happens temporally 
with our prayers, whether or not they're answered in the way that we thought that they should be answered. They are answered, right? Un, a, a non-answer, so to speak, or a no is an answer. Um, but what we what we can trust, right, is that whatever the outcome is, is somehow it aligns with his purposes and we know that his purposes are good. Um, and like I said, kind of when I started this, uh, read the book of Job. If you haven't gotten into the Old Testament, the, the book of Job is an incredible, incredible story um, packed full of wisdom and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to harp on it too much. Go read the book. Watch a YouTube video since you guys are YouTubers. You don't like to read. You like to listen to things. There are, there are great uh, YouTube channels out there that cover the book of Job. Um, go out there and, and research that. That helps you understand the sovereignty and the thoughts and the purposes of God. Um, Absolutely. And I'll just add one thing to what you said, mm -hmm. that um, when when Lazarus dies and, and Jesus finds out that he has died, mm. uh, Jesus cries. And uh, this is a really powerful line, you know, we, often we point to and say, oh, it's the shortest verse in the Bible. Yay, I learned some trivia. But, <laughs> right, right. but, but it, it's really a powerful line because it, it's God himself acknowledging that there's something wrong with this world, that mm -hmm. there's something wrong with the fact that Lazarus had died. Yeah. Um, he, he recognizes that it, it's broken and it breaks his heart, but it's necessary. It's necessary mm -hmm. for the world to be set up the way it is because it's the only way that we're able to make a free choice whether that we want to follow God or not. Beautiful. Well said. Absolutely. Um. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this line one more time. So if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone? If they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not, right? Um, this works both directions, by the way. So sometimes, and I think he uses children for a reason. Sometimes children ask for things that they think is good for them but actually isn't right. So if we reverse this, right, if you're, if your child asked you for a stone to eat, you're not going to give them the stone they asked for. That would not be a good parent. You're going to give them bread. If your child asks for a snake to eat, right? Although some people eat snakes, but for the, for the, for the illustration here for a snake, you're not going to give them the snake. You're going to give them fish, right? So sometimes, our wills are are not aligning with the with with the will of god sometimes we're asking for things that because we don't see far enough down the line if we receive those particular things right and we and we, and we learn about this in exodus right so when the people are fed up with the with the miracle manna that fell from heaven right you remember the story thaddeus they're like oh manna great this is an amazing miracle that happens every morning except for on the <laughs> sabbath day like pfft. We want some meat, right? And they start whining and complaining. And then God's like, oh, you want meat? You want meat, right? And then he sends them uh, all the quail or pigeons or whatever it is. They eat the pigeon, they get sick. Uh, it, it, you know, so <laughs> it's just kind of a silly, silly uh, story. But what, I'm, what, it, what is, it illustrates for us, right, is that no matter what we get, it's, it's what's actually in the best interest for all things to work together for the purpose of God. If there's one thing I've learned, and again, I'm all about cliche preacher sayings apparently lately, is God seems to be more concerned with our character than with our circumstances. And that's my general takeaway from, from these particular passages. Would you like to add anything, Mr. Thaddeus? No, I, I think that's very good. I okay. Think you, you put it well. I'm going long, man. I'm sorry. All right. Giving good gifts. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask them? 